What's up guys? In this video, we are going over everything freehold related. We will break down how to build a freehold, what your freehold can be made into, and how important freeholds will be, and the risks involved in owning one. To start, Stephen has stated that a freehold is achievable, but the amount of effort and resources required in order to achieve one is a large amount, and it is a monumental achievement for you. Freeholds tie in very heavily into processing and crafting, I'd expect to see top tier endgame materials and crafting to be done at Freeholds. Crafting and placement of a Freehold will require a lot of time and resources. We don't know how much at the moment, but I'm expecting it to be a team effort to put something together at the beginning of the game. On top of the resources, you will need to find a blueprint for the specific building type you want. After you have all of that, you need to get a certificate from the parent node for the area you wish to build your Freehold. Freeholds are also limited to one per account, so make sure you find the right spot for you. After you have the certificate for the area you like, the next step is picking the location. You will get half an acre plot of land for your freehold, and you can't place it near pathing routes, dungeons, event spawn areas, or other points of interest. Depending on where you place your freehold, you're going to get different environmental tiles available to you. This could buff existing structures on your freehold like a river nearby would buff fishing in the area. Now that your freehold is placed, you can name the buildings and start decorating. With a freehold, you can show off achievement trophies, craft your own furniture, apply skins to the freehold, add artwork and more. A master craftsman can craft more luxurious furniture and crafted items will be functional. You do have the option to buy pre-furnished sets for your freehold, but they will only be for visual and aesthetics. If you want them to be functional, you need to craft them or buy them from a crafter. Now let's talk about professions and progressions of the freehold. Top tier processing and crafting will need freeholds. To process the endgame resources, you will need a master processor with processing stations on the freehold. You may need to level up these stations as well by using them in order to process the top tier mats. So make sure your guild uses it and place it in a populated area near resources and hope that others will need your services. The freehold buildings are able to level based on time and productivity. So the more people using your freehold, the better. Steven says, we want there to be progression in many systems. And part of the freehold progression is that when you establish these base buildings, the longer and more productive you are with the freehold, the more opportunity these buildings will have, offering new abilities and new capabilities. Next, we will be talking about farming freeholds. A few different freeholds will work as farms. For example, the fishery is a farmable area that can be placed on a freehold plot. A fishery allows for the gathering of fish that are unique to the fishery blueprint. Next we will have freehold farms. Here you can grow crops or livestock like cows and chickens. Considering a lot of resources are not static, farming will probably play a big role for resources that are needed for endgame foods or buffs. Some crops are also seasonal, so growing them on a farm will help secure your stockpile for the off-season, potentially locking in a good profit for when the resources go scarce. The stables will be for breeding animals within the animal husbandry profession. I'd expect to see pets, mounts, and livestock on these freeholds. Animal husbandry will be an explorative profession around the world of Vera. You can tame wild animals, bring them to your stables, and breed animals together. You can mix some breeds together to make a new species. Royal mounts such as dragons are dropped as eggs in the world of Vera, and these eggs can be cultivated by an animal husbandry artisans with a high enough stable freehold. I think the stables will be one of the most important freeholds while players test and breed different animals together to make some of the best possible mounts or pets available. I think this is going to take a lot of trial and error to figure out it's a pretty exciting mechanic. After you breed animals, you will need to raise the animals to adulthood at the stables. You are limited to how many times you can breed the same animal, but you can also breed their offspring to mix even more species together. Up next is processing. A few different freeholds will be involved with the processing. First we have forges or a furnace which will be used to heat up resources. Then smelters or metalworking is where you process metal ore to turn into ingots for example. Then we will have a mill and a lumber yard. These buildings will be needed to process some resources that can't be processed at the node's normal workbench. If you choose one of these buildings it would probably be best to place them closer to a resource farming spot. This way players can use your freehold to help level it up instead of someone else's. Convenience will be the best way to get the most customers at your freehold. 
There's a few processing professions like alchemy, stonemasonry, tanning, which might get another freehold, but no details on that yet. I'd assume we get more buildings unless the mill will be for tanning and weaving, for example, and maybe the stonemasonry, metalworking are together. Not sure what alchemy would be with, so I'm expecting more freeholds later on. But ultimately, processing freeholds will be very important for endgame resources. Top tier crafting will require these processing freeholds to make their materials. Up next we have crafting freeholds, and these will be used to make endgame gear considering the best gear in Ashes of Creation is crafted. Nodes will have crafting stations as well, but they are capped, and eventually you will need a freeholds crafting stations to progress. First up is a blacksmithing freehold. Here you will craft armors and weapons. I'm not sure if blacksmithing will be capable of crafting for example light, medium, and heavy gear, or if it's going to be only focused on heavy metal gear. It's possible we are missing leatherworking freeholds right now, because crafting professions also include arcane, jewel cutting, leatherworking, and more, so I'm expecting to see them either share space or have other designated freeholds. Just like the other freeholds, the crafting stations will level up, so make sure your friends use your freehold as much as possible to unlock all the benefits. Up next, we have hospitality freeholds, such as taverns, inns, homesteads, and shrines. Placing shrines on your freehold may grant access to titles, quest lines for religion quests, and some temple benefits that you would get normally from a divine node, but they are probably reduced versions of these benefits. For homesteads, there's not much info on it, but I'm guessing there's probably going to be a house ranking system like you would see on other games. You should be able to add other buildings with the homestead. Don't forget the plot of land has individual tiles, so you can add multiple things on your plot. The inns will be another hospitality freehold. This building will offer players accommodation and furniture. The inns are listed as one of the player housing options, but I'm not sure if players can rent a room or how it will really work yet. I feel like the inns will work similar to the apartment buildings at the nodes, but they probably be very temporary and limited. Lastly, taverns will be probably one of the better hospitality freeholds. These will be limited per node by the node government, so acquiring one might be harder if you don't know the mayor or the parent node leadership. Taverns might play a good role for PvP and PvE because the freeholds will provide quests that can only be accepted from player-owned taverns as well as meals that grant buffs for a period of time after leaving the tavern. These buffs could potentially help for open world PvP or PvE content. Remember though, these freeholds can level up, so the more people using your location, the better all the benefits and perks can become. So make sure your friends use your freehold as much as possible to build it up faster. Taverns offer a lot for players, for example music chosen by the players, as well as rentable rooms for parlor games, bedrooms, and battle map rooms. While in the tavern you also have VoIP, making the building a very social hotspot. The parlor games will be a good distraction while you're building up rested experience. Rested experience is only gained by those who rent rooms or spend time as a patron of the tavern. Rested experience allows for players to gain experience faster for a period of time. Parlor games will include dice games, card games, and more. These games will involve aspects of both luck and skill. You will be able to gamble with in-game currency with other players. A portion of the income from these games go to the tavern owner. So if you're into owning a casino, this is the freehold for you. The owner of the freehold can also dictate the table cost for these games. Players will be able to buy food and drinks from the tavern owner and other patrons that they get their menu from. These consumables will offer tangible benefits to players that stay within the proximity of the tavern. The tavern can level up to increase the radius the consumables provide. You can get tavern NPCs to help sell food and drinks and other crafted items that have been made for that tavern. I think taverns will be a big hangout spot for players waiting for friends to get ready before heading out together. Up next we have guild halls. When a guild reaches a certain level, its guild master is granted a guild freehold certificate to enable placement of the guild hall. The guild halls offers a lot of benefits and customization options. A guild hall can be placed on a guild freehold or within nodes. The in node guild halls may only be claimed by a patron guild of the node. These guild halls will have different perks and benefits than the freehold plots. The guild halls will have objectives in guild wars. To become the patron guild for a node, its members must contribute the most amount of work for the node. This should include anything needed to build the progress of the node. Some perks to becoming the patron guild is access to the guild hall and applying emblems to the guild armor. That can be purchased in the node. 
You also get the ability to participate in guild-based missions that progress the leveling of the guild, which gives points to unlock specific node abilities for guild members. Any number of guilds can live or enter the node, but the number of patron guilds within a node is limited. Towns can have one patron guild and cities up to two, and finally the metropolis can have up to three patron guilds. The patron guilds also allocate points to increase their reputation in the node. This will impact NPCs and quests and merchant services. Moving on to Underrealm Freeholds. There's not much on these freeholds, but from my understanding, the Underrealm exists in deep caverns and underground valleys. Placing your freehold in these areas will change resources from farming and animal husbandry. You might experiment here with making new crops or trying to make unique mounts or pets. Now let's talk about freehold security. As the owner of a freehold, you can enable access to specific parts of your house or business. You can grant friends access to crops or crafting stations, as well as the ability to deposit or withdraw from your storage containers. So if you need help running your shop while you're offline, this is a way to keep it running. Players who do not have these permissions granted by you cannot steal from your freehold under normal circumstances. The freeholds are also one of the only safe spots in Ashes of Creation because you can't PvP inside of them. However, this won't always be the case because freeholds can also be attacked after a successful siege. And lastly, freehold destruction. If a siege is successful, then the node is brought back to level 0 and anyone who was a citizen no longer has their citizenship. At this time, any freeholds in the zone of influence are open to be attacked and destroyed for 2 hours. If your freehold is destroyed, you will suffer material loss and a blueprint will be mailed to you for future placement. You can hire NPC guards to help fight off raiders and other players can help assist protecting the land. After the 2 hour raiding period, any surviving buildings have a week long grace period. During this time you can rebuild the node or relocate. But you can't rebuild a freehold until the node is back to level 3. The blueprint saves your layout so you won't have to worry about making everything exactly the same again. If the attackers fail their siege, your freehold can still be destroyed during the siege. Any building that receives 25% damage or more must be repaired after a failed siege. This will cost resources and probably time to rebuild. I hope you found this video helpful and thanks for watching.